The gentleman from Oklahoma is recognized for four minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my good friend, the gentleman from Georgia, for yielding. Uh, I rise, Mr. Speaker, to oppose the rule and the underlying Same legislation. Uh, and this is actually a very sad occasion, I think, for the House, certainly is for me personally. I've never voted against a national defense authorization in my 17 years in Congress. And as a matter of fact, most of our members have never done that for the last 58 years. Uh, so it's pretty unusual for us to be here, and uh, we personally regret that a great deal. Now, my concerns with the substance of the bill are many, although there are, as my good friend uh, from Massachusetts said, lots of good things in there, and there was lots of bipartisanship in writing it. But the top line number is $15 billion less than the President request, and the Senate has already enacted in their NDA bill. We think that hurts readiness. We have concerns with the reversal of some decisions, both slowing down the modernization of our nuclear forces and moving us away from low-yield nuclear weapons, which we think we need to counter Russia uh, in its current uh, aggressive posture. Uh, we're disappointed the bill doesn't include long-standing prohibition against transferring detainees from Guantanamo Bay to the United States. Those provisions were put in by a Democratic Congress in 2010. We're sorry our friends seem to reverse a decision that they believed in uh, a decade ago. And it includes a lot of restrictive policies and prohibitions on securing the southern border, including prohibitions on funding the border wall, fence, physical barriers. I understand there are differences there, but uh, I would hope we could uh, give the executive flexibility in that area. But as concerned as I am about the substance of the bill, Mr. Speaker, I'm very concerned about the process. I grant my friends a point that a lot of amendments have been made in order. We could have made more. We actually offered an open rule last night that would have made everybody's amendments in order. It wouldn't have taken away any of the amendments my friends wanted to put out there, but it would have allowed everybody's amendments uh, to come to the floor for a full and robust debate. Now, the amendments that were made in order, 67 percent of them are Democratic amendments, 14 percent are Republican. We don't think that's a fair, remotely fair ratio. And frankly, the on-block arrangements in which we're going to bring many of these to the floor are even more imbalanced. Basically, 63 percent of those will be on Democratic initiatives. I think two are on Republican initiatives. So uh, we're very concerned about that. And I think if we don't stop this <laughs> process, we are about to make the mistake that we made two weeks ago. Now, the Senate has given us, as it did two weeks ago, a different example. They've passed a national defense authorization by a vote of 86 to 8, uh, and uh, so overwhelmingly bipartisan. The president has said he would sign their bill. The president sent us a message that the partisan bill that we're embarking on and about to pass, uh, he will not sign. So we're headed for a confrontation again. And it's a confrontation where we'll produce a partisan bill that the president won't sign. The Senate will produce a bipartisan bill that the president will sign. And I think we know how that story ends. So we're dangerously close to repeating the mistake we made only two weeks ago. And I would hope that we stop. Uh, because if we proceed down this path, we will find ourselves in precisely the same situation we found ourselves in in the border wall. Now, I also want to uh, take issue with my friend a little bit about uh, the 9-11 issue and uh, our friend uh, uh, Mr. Wilson's bill and, and uh, my good friend at the, in the chair's bill as well. Uh, and I just want to say putting a bill, those things that are bipartisan, that have in a rule, you know, it just literally means that our side's not going to vote for it. It would be the same if it were your side. You can say all you want. It was going to pass no matter what. Uh, so we don't think this was necessary. Gentleman is recognized for an additional minute. I thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my friend for the additional time, and I'll, I'll be brief. So uh, it's with a great deal of sorrow that I, uh, not sorrow that I oppose the, uh, uh, the rule, because I think uh, the rule needs to be much more open, much more inclusive. But I hope that we can get back, Mr. Speaker, and by rejecting this rule and rejecting the uh, underlying legislation, we can to a bipartisan process where we produce a bipartisan National Defense Authorization Act. So with that, Mr. Speaker, I urge rejection of the rule, rejection of the underlying legislation, yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Georgia reserves.
Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I, I think the gentleman from Massachusetts is recognized. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I, you know, um, I understand the frustration on 